On TVC News at 1, the military has commenced burial arrangements for 22 soldiers killed in Niger State following an ambush on troops in Zungeru local government and the crash of a Nigerian Air Force aircraft on a recovery mission. The mood at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja is a sober one as families of the soldiers gather for the remains of the officers to be laid to rest. Present are the Minister of State for Defense, Bilo Matawali, and the service chiefs. 36 troops were ambushed in attacks on the 13th and 14th of this month while fighting bandits in Niger State. The Nigerian Air Force MI-71 that came on a casualty evacuation mission also crashed on the mountains in Shiroro, Niger State. Let's speak to TVC News defense correspondent Sifon Yesien, who is witnessing the burial at the National Cemetery in Abuja. Sifon, what is the mood at the cemetery? Uh, thank you very much. I can hardly hear at the moment, but if you're asking about the mood, it's the same. Uh, a solemn atmosphere here at the National Military Cem uh, Cemetery here in Abuja. Um, a while ago, the Minister of Defence and the Minister of State Defence laid their wreath in honour of the souls of the fallen soldiers and they left this arena for other, uh, other pressing matters they have to attend to. But the ceremony is continuing at this moment and a citation of the troops that paid the price um, has been read uh, to the uh, you know, guests present at this moment. Um, what we've seen is an outpour of emotions you would expect grieving families at this moment trying to manage their emotions and sometimes we've seen lots of outbursts uh, characteristic of an event like this. They've lost their loved ones and that's a big blow to the Nigerian army, the Nigerian military and indeed the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Minister of Defence and his Minister of State left the venue. Did they say anything about the welfare of the families that these soldiers left behind? But what we know is that in, when situations like this happen, the system has a way of um, handling the welfare of the next of kin and the families of those these soldiers and officers have left behind. Um, we also expect that when the Chief of Defence Staff mounts the rostrum, he's going to make some um, definite remarks as regards to what more will be done to ensure that um, the price paid by the soldiers would not go in vain. Indeed, I can imagine you know, what, what these individuals really are going through. Have you been able to interact with any of them, how they are reacting to you know, this loss at this critical time? Again, it's difficult hearing you at this moment, um, sounds coming from the speakers and uh, um, this entire environment. But if you're asking about interacting with the, um, the colleagues or their family members, for once, uh, for one, we've not been able to act, uh, interact with the um, families they left behind because they asked us to allow them grief. Maybe afterwards we'll get to speak with them. But for their colleagues, they said this would... Um, affirm their resolve to live up to their mandate as fighting soldiers to ensure that the death of their colleagues do not go in vain. In other words, they are going to throw in all they've got to ensure that the country becomes safer as a means of paying back, you know, for the investment by the federal government has made in them as well as honoring the contributions of their colleagues who are now about to be laid to rest. Defence correspondent Sifon is here for us. In Thank you for that update. I also have joining me security and developmental expert Musa Salmano. He joins us from Abuja. But those soldiers that are being laid to rest paid their supreme sacrifice. In other states where they died, displaced persons are still afraid of going back to the communities. What do you make of the security situation in Niger State? Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, our condolences to the pair, the families of uh, those who lost their loved ones. Uh, nothing can really explain, I'm sure, or can um, say what the feeling is when one lo uh, loses loved ones. Um, the consolation is that they died for a cause uh, that is bigger than all of us, that's restoring peace to a nation they so much love that they swore to protect. 
um, and I'm sure the death will not be uh, in vain. Uh, having said that, um, the security situation in Niger State, um, it's like most part of uh, Northwest, which is now uh, dragging into, uh, crossing into some parts of North Central where Niger State is. Um, I would say that it's something that is uh, worrisome, even though there are a lot of efforts to bring it under control. Um, and that effort is part of what took these uh, soldiers to um, Niger, where unfortunately or ultimately they paid the supreme price. Um, so it's something that we will say in terms of uh, irregular warfare or in terms of this type of conflict, uh, you can predict, you can only say this is when it has started, you can predict uh, when it will come to a complete stop. However, measures could be adopted that will um, ensure that the terrorists um, or whoever they call themselves uh, do not uh, have a free reign of terror um, at, uh, terrorizing the populace. Mm, all right. And uh, these persons definitely have left families behind. How would you assess how the families of slain soldiers have been cared for in the past? So, um, it, I mean, like we said earlier, nothing can really uh, pay for one sacrificing his life or what can actually console or kind of um, take care of uh, the absence of a loved one, especially a breadwinner. However, the service uh, through, uh, or the government through the services, various services, uh, that's the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, and the Defense Headquarters have it continuously improved on the welfare and the well-being of our veterans, and especially those who died in active service. Uh, dying in active service is a very, uh, is seen as a very um, big issue. What do I mean by that? Uh, one has sacrificed uh, himself or his life, which is the most precious thing to, this, to the nation. So there are provisions made for uh, kind of to take care of the family left behind. Uh, despite what is written in the terms and conditions of services, uh, various services also go um, beyond the call of duty to ensure that uh, the families that they left behind are also adequately taken care of. Is it enough? Uh, I would say no, nothing can be enough for people that paid that price. However, there are a lot of uh, um, ways which can be improved on, but there are provisions to take care of the uh, families that they left behind. All right, then. Most sincerely appreciate you for talking to us at this time. Musa Salmanu, security situation, uh, talking about the security situation in Niger State and, of course, the laying to rest of these soldiers who have paid the supreme sacrifice. Thank you so much for talking to us on TV News at 1. Thank you for having me.